you guys. Okay, so this isn't my first rodeo. This is my third rodeo. I bought the wide milts bow. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I am a plant collector. It's COVID, we all understand each other. We all have way too many plants. I personally happen to have too many picky plants that need a greenhouse and I was straight over capacity in my two, my tall mills bow and my detolf. So when I went online and saw they had this new wide mills bow, I was pretty excited because I really, really like the aesthetics of the mills bows. So this was perfect. It is front row center in my living room. So it is now right under the TV being the main focus of the living room. So this is where my most precious favorite plants are going to live and reside. So like I was saying, I was over capacity. I even had to offload some plants on friends. So it was a desperate situation. I needed it. So I'm looking at it right now. It's pretty, I really like it. I definitely recommend it. I will say the way I have mine set up, if you are looking for capacity, you are going to probably want the tall mills bow. I find that I can fit much more in that tall mills bow, even with how I only use like really two levels, you can still fit a ton in that tall mills bow. This one, you can't really fit as much. You're a little more limited on space. Still beautiful and I love it, but if you were looking to purchase one Ikea cabinet and you are looking for a one size fits all, you're gonna wanna go for the tall mills bow. Wide mills bow is beautiful if it fits the space you have and you don't have like, you know, 50 plants you're trying to fit in it. If you have a reasonable number of plants, which I'm sure some of you out there do, I just can't personally relate to being reasonable. I have that too much gene, but the wide mills bow is a really beautiful piece. It feels so nice and sturdy. The doors are so big. The glass panes are so huge. You can see right in. I love it so much. So some of you may have seen my previous uh, tall mills bow and de Tolf videos. And in that Millsbow video, I had mentioned that I didn't really do cable management. I fed everything out through the door because it was up against a wall. So it didn't really matter where the cables went. But this one, like I said, is front row center in the living room. So it needed to look nice. So I actually drilled the hole in this one. I had some help with it. I'll insert some video footage showing us doing it to prove it happened. <laughs> and I did it wrong. <laughs> I didn't really think, oh, maybe I should figure out where the leg is going before I just started drilling. So as you can see, the hole accidentally overlaps with a part of the leg, but fear not, for some reason why that has a hole, nobody knows the hole doesn't do anything. So there's no screw that's supposed to go in there. It's just support with a hole. So that's what my hole looks like. It's got part of the leg in it and it's fine. Now I've seen people put like a desk grommet in there that's perfect, it would look amazing. I bought one, it was my every intention, but it was a little too small. Like I drilled the hole with a two inch, I bought a two inch and it's just like the tiniest bit, or sorry, the tiniest bit too large. So I couldn't get it in the hole. If you also saw my Millsbow, you will know that I love to jam pack these cabinets. So you cannot see <laughs> that that hole is uncovered. You can't even see the hole, so. It's no problem. Now the aesthetics I went for with this particular cabinet are the same aesthetics as my tall mills bow. But if anybody knows who Craig Milron is, the plant daddy of all plant daddies, I used his totem method throughout here. So I have an idea and a vision. I have baby plants though. So hopefully you can also see my idea and my vision when I show you the inside of this cabinet. So without further ado, I have talked enough. You've heard my whole spiel probably in the tall Millsbo video about why I like these greenhouse cabinets. If you haven't heard it, feel free to go check it out. That's a really long video. Um, I will link that in the description down below as well for both the tall Millsbo and the Detolf. Now I will take you over to the TV area to show you what I've made. Okay, so here we are at the greenhouse. Now I'm laying on the cozy pretty thick, but it's already hitting below zero in Edmonton here some nights. Uh, I think this weekend is supposed to be negative 11 already, so I was in the mood for this. 
Plus my original thought before putting a third greenhouse in was to put a fireplace here, but now it's a greenhouse. So you can clearly see the wide Mills bow there and you can see my dog in the bottom corner in his little den thing over here, so cute. Now, one thing really quick, I did do the cable management through the bottom. Um, you can see one cord hanging a little low there. I got to tuck away, but pretty clean. You can see that I've utilized all the shelves for some space. The nice thing about this is not all plants need the humidity of the greenhouse, but some plants would love the grow lights. So there we are, like a Cebu Blue and some uh, Jade Satin Scandapsis. They can still get the grow lights because the sides are glass but they don't have to be inside of that greenhouse. And it might be hard to tell from back here, but you'll see better when we get in closer. I put contact paper on the back wall. So to conceal the wall behind, it's like a wood grain look contact paper that's kind of in a similar color as the pegboard. And the nice effect that it's making is it actually is like glowing kind of orange on the wall. It makes it look really, really pretty. Sorry for the jump cut. My dog was complaining that he didn't have his swingy chair. I had to move a few things out of the way so it was uh, blocked by one of the outdoor pieces of furniture. So he's happy now. Anyways, back to the greenhouse. So I'll take you inside. So again, like the exact same as the other Mills bow, you can see the weatherproofing in between the doors. I put that weather stripping on one door, just the one that pegs shut. Doesn't need to be on both because this one just slides to touch that one. And this weather stripping hangs off the lip. So we can see it here. The two different types of weather stripping, the one I use for the door, and then this slightly, sorry, let's see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, there we go. The slightly thicker one for all around the edges. I use the thicker one along the top. Well, we're out of focus and all down the sides, not on the bottom. The bottom's, it's not a tight seal, but it does have like this little dip in, so it seems to work just fine. So like in all of my greenhouses, I use the Fiat Electric Grow Lights. They are so good, like so good. I get insane growth from them, and I know that not everyone is a huge fan of that kind of gently pink glow, but um, they really, really work great. Now, to attach them, I used Command Brand Velcro photo hanging tape. So you can really easily remove them, uh, but they do not go anywhere. I've tried a few different double-sided tapes in the other, like in my original Mills bow before I settled with this, and the humidity seemed to cause all of them to fail. So it would fall on my plants. This one doesn't seem to do that. Now, like I mentioned as well, I put this contact paper in behind. It's kind of hard to see because of the light now. I waited for it to get dark before filming this, of course, but it's just like a wood look that just kind of matches all of the wood look furniture that I have. Again, I'll link everything in the description box down below. The fan is the same fan that I use in the Mills Bow and the Detolf as well. It is the Go On brand fan. Just a desk fan with three different speeds. I like the first speed and the second speed, kind of depending on the heat in here. The third speed turns it into a bit of a tornado. Now, my fountain. So my fountain was actually out of stock. If the Michaels fountain, it turns out that they're seasonal. So I had to find an alternative and I really like this one. You can actually hear this fountain. The other fountain doesn't make any noise. And this one has a nice little gentle glow to it. I actually really, really like it. Um, plus it's quite cheap on Amazon. So again, everything will be linked below. So same as my other units. Again, it, I love this so much, so I keep redoing it. Uh, but I use the Scatus pegboard. Uh, the Detolf I had done black on black, and that's definitely an aesthetic and a look. But in this living room, I kind of wanted this natural color. So I didn't spray paint this one. Now, the Scatus pegboard, uh, if you have a humidifier, you're probably going to want to spray it with something to keep it from expanding and having issues because I'm pretty sure it's just like particle board. But using just a fountain, the humidity in here doesn't get to be like damp. So the pegboards in all of my units have done just fine without any extra protection. And there again, right in the middle, you can see the screws holding the unit in. Now, I did have to use slightly longer screws than the ones that come with the Mills bow. 
uh, just to account for both the pegboard as well as the backing. Uh, we have kind of like a washer in there. I'll put a little video clip in here of what our little washers look like. We created our own, uh, just 3D printed them. It's definitely not necessary. It's just I needed something quick that would also support the glass because in the tall mills bow, there's more screw holes. So at different portions, I was able to put the actual like glass supports, but in this short mills bow, there are no glass supports in the middle if you use a pegboard. So I don't know what risks that would come with, but I also didn't want to find out. So we just basically popped that on, screwed those guys in to the three holes, and we were good to go. It's very, very sturdy, and we printed those little washers to be just a, at least as thick as the hooks that were going into the cabinet so that nothing would be pushing against the glass. So like I mentioned, this unit is new. So this is not as fully stocked as I know myself. I... I have that too much gene. This thing is gonna be so over full by the time I'm done with it, but right now it's looking clean and tidy. <laughs> uh, just I haven't had a chance to get my mitts on totally cramming this thing full, but basically I've tossed a few of my favorite Hoyas up top, um, some of the trailing Skindapsis up there to really give them a good shot at growth. A few of my absolute favorites, um, like my Clarinerviums, my Jewel Orchid, um, the Splendid, uh, basically anything that I just would love to be able to look at all day. My elbow, of course, over there. And then comes my ultimate vision for this. So what I want from this, you can see my Craig Milran uh, totems there. And again, all my plants on them are quite small. But my end goal is to have all those totems stretching straight up to the ceiling where I can. Uh, I'll totem the elbow. I'll totem as much as I can and just basically have them growing all the way up. That would be the end goal for this, I think, to have a bunch of totems along the back wall, some of my anthuriums with the beautiful veining in the front, uh, basically create that kind of a landscape. So for the time being, I've got some stuff hanging, but uh, end goal would be to have those toteming up. And I'll show you what I mean. You could actually just feed through a little loop of something here just to help hold this support against the wall so that your totems, once they're all nice and tall, aren't gonna be tipping all over the place. Because again, a lot of plants that can totem really don't need very large pots. So they'll probably still be in tiny, tiny pots, but all the way to the roof where then they're gonna be a little bit tippy. So the pegboard will be helpful for that reason as well as anyone who takes a long time to climb, <laughs> I'll be able to still hang some of my pretty stuff above it. So really that is kind of my entire setup for this short wide mills bow. Uh, I love it. It's a great little centerpiece. It fits in awesome. Uh, I am not upset that I didn't put a fireplace here. I will survive with the TV fireplace for now, if it means that I get to just stare at all of my beautiful, beautiful plants. So again, for every single thing that I've used in here, I will leave all of those links in the description box down below for you guys. My labeler, the fountain, uh, all of the Scatus, all the Ikea things I've purchased. I'll leave all of that down below with these little Scatus clips, the Scatus container, all of it. I will leave below for you guys so that you can check it out. And in the description, I will timestamp everything. So if you were looking for how to weatherproof or how the lights are affixed, it will all be timestamped in the description box below to help you guys out if you need to come back to this later. So I have been asked to do some plant tours and some, you know, like what do I have in the greenhouse, those kinds of things. I'll definitely make a video about that to show you guys everything that's in here, everything that's in the big mills bow, which is, oh my goodness, a it's so packed right now, it's insane. It's got like twice the amount of plants that it did when I did that tour. But I definitely plan to do that in the future. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you guys have any questions at all about anything uh, to do with how I've styled the greenhouse, um, how anything in the greenhouse works, definitely leave them below. I make sure to get back to everybody. And thank you guys so, so much for all of the love on the other two videos. It really means a lot to me. It was, it's been really awesome and I'm thankful for everyone who's tagging along. I guess I'll sign out with little Svenny here because I've kind of done my whole spiel on all these greenhouses on 
the other two videos. So I'll let Sven sign us off. Oh, what a nice boy. So again, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye you guys.